What we're going to be doing in this video is testing LECA. On the left, we have LECA that's been in that storage container with water, RO water, for the past two months. And on the right, we have LECA that has just come out of the bag. It's been rinsed, boiled, rinsed again, put into RO water with the same pH, but it's only been there for 24 hours. And in the front, I have my new seaweed. I want to check the parts per million of all the containers based on recycled LECA that's been stored for two months in its water, how is it leaching, and based on a brand new bag of LECA that has only been in that water for 24 hours, and based on the fact I've got new seaweed, meaning I need to see if my parts per million will be the same or different when I put it into a 10 liter bucket. So if you already like the idea of this video and you've clicked on it, give it a like, thank you very much. And give the channel a chance and subscribe if you have not already done so. Nine second intro gives you the chance to do that. I'll see you just now. So glad that you stuck around. Thank you so much for being here. Right, I'm gonna take my seaweed out. It was stored in the fridge. I don't want it in the sun for too long, even though it's not a warm, warm day. You know, sun, seaweed, a little bit of warmth. Don't wanna do that. Keep your seaweed stored in the refrigerator. It's the best practice. Okay, to clarify, here is my recycled lecker that I've been using for many, many years. Into pots, out of pots, cleaned, boiled, etc. Stored in water, RO water at 7 pH. So this lecker has been through its paces. However, it's been four or five months since I have used my lecker that I have in my stash. Just before Christmas, I did a water exchange, poured out the old RO water, put in fresh RO water just because. Back then, I didn't measure the TDS because I didn't think I was going to need another bag of lecker. So, <laughs> enter my planning for 2023, and I'm considering doing a lot of up pots, I had to source a new bag of lecker. You can see I have not separated it out yet, so some of these I wouldn't be using, but this is the lecker from the bag that I just recently purchased. And this one is just a batch that I have taken out of the bag, done my little procedure of rinsing all the dust off, boiling it for 20, 30 minutes, depending how quickly I got back to it. In RO water, yes, I boil my lecker in RO water. I want the lowest parts per million in the water that I'm boiling my lecker in. The idea being to leach out salts and excess minerals, etc. Get it as clean as possible. Now, it's only been in this container for 24 hours and I wanted to do the comparison with you. And yes, while there will be a lot of, you know, parts per million being waiting on, see if that works out, and a little bit of sloshing to get the pH to stabilize, I just want to make sure that you know I'm not going to put you through those paces. I am instead going to be doing editing so that you don't have to sit around and wait to see the results. If the display doesn't show what I'm trying to show, I will put it up on the screen. And trust me, I'm not cheating at all. Right, so we're going to go with the pH of the water that was initially in my stored lecker, the recycled lecker, what I call old lecker. It's been in my collection for a long, long time. And yes, I'm touching the lecker simply because I want the display to show on screen. The pH is 6.5, 6.6. Not gonna do any jiggling. I don't want to mess with the probe, but this gives us an idea as to how the pH is affected or not. 6.7, that's okay. Absolutely fine, 6.8. If it goes up to seven, even better. I'm not gonna wait for that here. At least it's not at eight or nine, which is actually the pH of my tap water. So after two months, my RO water stayed neutral in stored lecker that has been with my collection over a long, long period of time. This is good. All right, let me just rinse that out. Let's see what the pH says in the water that was only added to this container last night. Oh, I hope you can see that. I'm at 9.8. Ooh, we have a long way to go. 10 even. Right. This lecker needs a lot, a lot of leaching, which is great because I don't need it straight away. I have enough lecker in my stash. 
I can leach this for at least four to five months should I ever really need it. This is amazing. You see how important it is to leach your lecker, if nothing else. This is what I didn't do right at the beginning of my collection because orchids were coming in thick and fast and I was just cleaning, boiling, and then potting up. I didn't get around to leaching. And this is then what went into my pots. Wow, maybe not this batch of lecker, of course. Take that into consideration, but it's way over the top. And then you can understand how the pH can become a problem, how the orchids can have nutrient deficiencies, because we hear that yes, Lekka is inert, but it is not pH neutral to a degree because it does change the pH of the water as it is releasing all its excesses, like, you know, the salts, the minerals, and whatever it is, it is that they put into Lekka to get it to production to expand because it's not just heat they use. Sometimes they also use paraffin. Okay, 10.4. Super, super interesting. Let me rinse that out straight away. I don't want that on my probe. <laughs> Oh, okay. Right. Well, well, well. If that wasn't an eye-opener, I don't know what was. I'm glad I'm filming this. It makes it easier to not be explaining so much. Proof is in the pudding. Now, we're going to measure the TDS, the parts per million, of the lecker that's been in my collection for a long, long time, stored in the water for the past two months. Look at that, 498. 97. I hope that is visible. I think I can see on the screen it's working. We're going up to 5 as I'm getting closer and touching the lecker. 502. Now that's a lot. That is also quite a lot. I wouldn't want to put that in my pots. So after filming this, I'm going to be doing another water exchange because I do want to get that TDS down to at least 100 before I use it in my pots. But it's interesting that even over a period of two months, this lecker is still leaching. And we'll see what it does when we get into this container <laughs> that's only been in there for 24 hours. Now, I have had my stored lecker last year all the way up to 1,000 plus parts per million. That's my old lecker. Now, let's see what the new lecker is doing. It is a smaller batch. I know, I don't have the right quantities. It is a smaller batch. Can you see the screen? That is amazing. Can you, I hope you can see that. We're only at 326. That's not so bad because I'm going to just leave this lecker in this container to leach with 326. Huh, I'm just gonna let it leach for another 24 hours before I do a water exchange, but I do want it to drop to 100 parts per million at a minimum before it goes into my pots. If, of course, the pH stays neutral, like we saw over here. So, didn't get that final reading. 331, I think we're okay with that. 331, not too bad. Cleaner than I expected. I was expecting a thousand just out of that small batch, but that's promising So all we need to really work on with this load is the pH bring the pH down Fantastic, but anyway, you can see how important it is to keep track of what your lecker is doing even while in storage Even while you've recycled it even after you've had it for many many years. It doesn't hurt looking forward to doing the water exchange. And yeah, next time I'm gonna measure it again just to make sure that not too much of the parts per million goes into my pot. So let's move on to my seaweed. I've gotta change the camera angle to do that because I'm bringing up a bucket that I normally would use anyway. Meanwhile, I am enjoying the fragrance of my Prostechia Garciana Alba. Oh, she's delicious beautiful talcum powder fragrance on this orchid. Let me get my bucket, I'll be right back. I'm not affiliated with this product. The instructions say five milliliters per liter. <laughs> no, I never did five milliliters per liter, not even with my other product. I 
always did five milliliters in 10 liters of RO water. And the reason being orchids don't need that much. So I'm gonna go with what I normally knew so that I can do a comparison as well with regards to the concentration and how strong this product is. Meanwhile, it's very, very thick in comparison to what, I use, uh, what I'm used to. I gotta shake it up, shake it up, ooh, ooh. Or shake it like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Don't wanna waste your time. I think I'm enjoying that fragrance of the Prostecchio far too much. Just to let you know that I have actually not, ooh, it's green. Woohoo! That's new. So my measure is a little teaspoon that I have, and I always use this one for my 10 liter bucket. And that's what we're going to compare it. Exactly what I did before compared to what I did back then. Oh, look at that. It's almost like a molasses. Lovely jubbly. Let me get that into frame again, sorry. Feel like a bit of a chameleon now, but isn't that green just ooh yum? Hmm. Don't tell me I need my cake mix to stir this up. Maybe this product will require more. Let's just see. That surprised me. It surprises me to see it like that. But what I want to do now is measure the parts per million in this bucket of RO water which was five parts per million when I got it out of the deposit of my RO system. So let's have a look-see. I've got to make sure that I move the seaweed before my clumsy elbow spills the whole thing. <laughs> Easily done. Right, let's have a look-see. Let's see what it says. Ooh, 32, 31. So that means I've got 25 parts per million in here. Oh, we're still going down. Eh, to be expected if it's not solid, solid, liquid, liquid. That doesn't even make sense. Solid, solid, liquid, liquid. You know what I mean. All right. Well, let's just say we've got 20 parts per million per five milliliters. Huh. Okay. I'm going to then need to, I normally do 40 parts per million of seaweed in my buckets. So one more time, maybe I need to double up on this one to get what I normally put into my orchids. Ooh, this is amazing. The only thing I don't know about you, but I'm super fussy about ahem, spills like this. I don't like that one bit. And uh, with a white bottle, I can already see I'm gonna have some major visual issues. <laughs> It'll be a lot of wiping and cleaning when I use this product. Look, if I'm not happy with it once it's done, I'm going to try something else, you know? This is not me testing the product. This is me trying to get seaweed that I can source in Europe that is quality and, you know, that doesn't degrade the way the Kelpmax product did that I was using before because that stuff literally separated itself and then was like a very light tea color as opposed to brown color that I'm so accustomed to when it comes to seaweed. So we've got 60. All right, I can live with that. Minus the five, that's 55. Okay, I'm just gonna have to get used to, maybe it is one and a half of my teaspoons of this seaweed product to get it to the 40 that I want. Meanwhile, the margins are so, so low. It doesn't matter whether I'm at 55 or I am at 40. For our orchids, the margins are super low. But I find this very, very interesting. And we are going to see how they do with this product for the season. The only comparison I could really do is if I use this product for about two years, you know, I can't really make any judgment for one only one season only. That's not possible. But yeah, I'm gonna see myself be doing this a lot. <laughs> but you know what? The major eye opener for me was the lecker. This is important. You want to make sure that you keep your lecker as clean as possible. And for that reason, 
I measure my parts per million on a regular basis and my pH so that I know what's going into the pot. If push comes to shove, I can manipulate the pH of the nutrient solution to the point where the nutrients are readily available. However, I don't think I'm going to need to do that because I've got plenty of stash, as I said, and the new batch has plenty of time to leach. Lots of water exchange is coming up, which is what I'm going to do with that one right there, right now. If you have any questions as to my psycho babble with regards to Lekka pH and parts per million, I've done several videos on that, but I wanted to document a new bag versus Lekka that has already been in the collection for a long time, that has been recycled, and see the difference between the two. For me, this was a great eye-opener. Now I know what I need to do in order to be really ready for the season when it is time to do some repotting and up-potting. I hope that you're going to stick around on my channel and experience all that. And I hope that this video was helpful. Once again, give it a like if you enjoyed the video, if the content was helpful and an eye opener to you as well. And yeah, subscribing would be amazing. And I need to get my channel to a certain number. I have a goal in mind and I hope you can help me with that. Thank you so very, very much for your time. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.